Welcome to Interviews with Entrepreneurs show where we interview entrepreneurs who are super awesome in their niches. And guys, like today we have a special guest, Myron Golden. If you don't know about who Myron is, like Myron is like world renowned like speaker, coach. Yeah, he have trained people like you know Dana Derricks, Dan Henry, Trelawine, Rachel Peterson, and like so many people out there. And he have influenced like a lot of people's life. He have also a best-selling author, you know, from the trash, trash man to cash man out there. So I would like to welcome Mr. Myron Golden to the show. Hey, Myron. Hello. Thank you so much for being on the show. Absolutely. My pleasure, RJ. How are you today? Absolutely awesome. What about you? Utterly fantastic. Better now that I'm talking to you. I love what you're doing. Love what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you so much. And yeah, guys, the people who are tuning in live, like use hashtag live. The people who are jumping on replay, use hashtag replay out there. And again, Myron, thank you so much for being on the show. So I wanted to like ask a little bit about like how you really got started into entrepreneurship, because I really know that you have a freaking awesome story down the road, how you got into it. Yeah. So I, I, want, I really got started in entrepreneurship before I knew I got started in entrepreneurship. Yeah. Right. So I went off to college came home from college my first year after my first year i bought this old raggedy car um for 50 dollars. it was a 1972 buick skylark drove it around all summer and then i got ready to go back and it was too raggedy for me to drive back to college so i sold it for 300 dollars, and i made like 250 dollars profit on this on this car and so i like my first real entrepreneurial venture was buying old cars fixing them up and selling them when I say old, I don't mean antique. I just mean old people were tired of them, right? And um, and so I'd add yeah. a little value to the car. I'd put a transmission in or put an engine in or might maybe put a paint job on or a bumper or whatever it needed. And um, and I would sell that car for a profit. Um, but I didn't really consider myself an entrepreneur. I was just a guy trying to figure out how to make some money. And then um, I got right after I got married, I got introduced to a network marketing company that sold insurance and investments. And when I went to work with that company, that's where that's my first official intro into entrepreneurship. That was October of 1985. And, yeah. and what's interesting, RJ, I was so bad at selling. Like I was so bad that I got started in October of 1987, but I didn't make my first sale until um, until April of 1987. So I got started in October of 1985. Wow. I didn't make my first sale until April of 87. It was an 18 months before I made my first sale and I was doing presentations, I was working, I was just horrible. And um, fortunately for me and for my family and for the people that I serve now, I was willing to be bad at sales long enough to get good at sales. And now um, I'm considered to be one of the best in the world at sales. And I train high level entrepreneurs how to sell more at higher prices. Absolutely. And that was absolutely an awesome journey out there, how everything was transitioned for you. You know, you sold, like you bought cars at 50 bucks and, you know, selling those cars out there, you know, at the higher prices out there, customizing it and like doing so many things out there. That was absolutely awesome. And absolutely. we really know that you also love martial arts. You love Bruce Lee and everything out there. So like, like oh. what you really <laughs> uh, like learned one thing from Bruce Lee, if you learned, you know, because he was all about patience. He had like so much, you know about mindset and everything out there what have you learned yeah. from him if you've learned if you talk yeah, about so thing. bruce lee bruce lee was like my dude man when i was growing up I, first bruce lee movie i saw i was like this guy is awesome i love the fact there are so many things about bruce lee that i like i love the fact that he was little but he was a superhero like a real life yeah. superhero right um he could take on armies of people and just wipe them out with his moves and his sounds and everything about it and so he was he was a super he was he was little but he was a superhero, right? He was larger than life. His energy was larger than life. And um, the fact that he could fight, he wasn't, a, you know, he wasn't, he didn't capitulate to the circumstances of life. When something came at him, he came back at it and he came back harder and faster. I love that about Bruce Lee. And I love the fact that he didn't allow the system to put him in a box or push him around instead of being uh, going with this style of martial arts or this style of martial arts, Bruce yeah. Lee was the first martial arts innovator. And I think this is probably the greatest lesson that we could learn from Bruce Lee or learn from anybody, um, that Bruce Lee was somebody who took the best of all the different fighting styles, tied them together, and created his own fighting style, Jeet Kune Do. So that's the thing to me that I think everybody should get from, not just Bruce Lee, Bruce Lee, Steve Jobs, Elon Musk, take the best of all of the things that, you know about that seem to be unrelated, tie them together and create something new that changes the world. 
Absolutely. That absolutely makes a lot of sense out there because there's a lot of way that you can really go in and, you know, innovate in the things out there, which, you know, truly makes sense. So how really things got transitioned for you, you know, getting into like selling cars and, you know, getting into insurance company out there, there was sort of network marketing, like how things transitioned for you to getting into like public speaking and wealth building out there for you? Yeah. So I learned about financial literacy. I learned about how money works and the rule of 72 and the importance of investing and um, the importance of, you know, using time and consistency to compound wealth. So I learned that concept in the in network marketing company that was financial services. Then I went to a different network marketing company where I actually started selling physical products, selling nutritional supplements um, and recruiting people. And I learned how to build teams. And then I just every time I, I did multiple different network marketing companies on my journey, and it seemed like as soon as I'd get some momentum, the company would either change the comp plan or change the product or do something. And then my whole team would go away and then I have to start over. And I just said to myself one day back in 1999 or 2000, I said, I'm not doing this anymore. If some knucklehead is going to change things and mess up my opportunity, I want that knucklehead to be me. And so I said, I'm going to stop building other people's business and I'm going to start. I don't know. There are a lot of people out there who want to do network marketing. I'll teach them how to do network marketing. And so when I first got started as a trainer, I trained network marketers on how to do network marketing. That's where I got wow. started. When, okay. So here's the thing. When you said, you know, now you're not going to do these type of things out there. That was the time when I born. like, it was like freaking crazy. I'm 21. So I bought it in 1999. So that, that's <laughs> kind of crazy sort of process out there. And I'm like, ah, that's crazy. So, yeah. So like everything, like the way that everything start to work out out there, you got a lot of sort of, you know, financial literacy out there where a lot of people really don't know about like sort of wealth, you know, people talk right. about kind of wealth out there, but they really don't know about it. So like no, how do you don't. define generational sort of wealth out there? Because we know that you know about money, so, you love money and everything about it. So, so, so wealth is an interesting thing. Wealth is your ability, your ability to live into the future without having to worry about creating money right that's what wealth is yeah. and so and so it um in the bible it says it says a rich man's wealth is his strong city or a rich man's wealth is his financial fortress but the destruction of the poor is their poverty and so i thought okay how can i build a financial fortress and so if i i'll, I'll just show you real quick i'm gonna i'm gonna change oh. to my whiteboard view so I'm going to change my digital whiteboard view so you can see my digital whiteboard. So one of the things that I do is I teach people how to build a financial fortress. And so you have to have a foundation on this fortress. And that foundation needs to be the truth about wealth. And there are a lot of lies out there about money. I don't even have time to go into all of them right now. Maybe I'll cover some of those in a minute. And then Absolutely. you have, then you have um, these, th these three pillars in your financial fortress that you have to build and you have to build them in the right order. Um, so I'm going to take, get rid of that one and do it over again. You have these three pillars on your financial fortress, and then you have this roof. Okay. So this is the financial fortress. This is your asset protection, right? This is all of the things you do to protect, uh, your wealth. This is the truth about wealth. If you are going to yeah. build wealth at last, you're going to have to build it on a foundation of truth. And there, I'll cover some of those in a minute. So you're going to want to build these pillars. So after you discover this foundation of truth, this is one of the reasons why learning is so important. This is this is where your learning takes place. Like you, you learn right down here. You read, right? You study. Um, you get coaching. Because... If you keep doing what you're do already doing, you're going to keep getting what you're already getting. You're not going to you're not going to change your life with the same level of thinking that you are that you've built what you've already built. And so yeah. so you got to You got to have some kind of outside influence on your life to teach you how to, the truth about wealth. Somebody who's already done it. So the first pillar that you want to build is the leverage pillar. So. And the leverage pillar is is your uh, colossal cash flow. So what do I mean, colossal cash flow? Um, so I'm going to just put CC, colossal cash flow. So what is colossal cash, colossal cash flow? Colossal cash flow is you want to create 
um, leverage where you're no longer being leveraged. So one of the lies that we've been told about money is time is money, time is money, time is money, yeah. time is money. Every time I hear somebody say that, it's like uh, it's like fingernails on a chalkboard. Time is not money. Time is infinitely more valuable than money. If you go through life believing that time is money, you're going to sell a whole bunch of your time for a little bit of somebody else's money. And you're also going to waste a lot of time trying to save a little bit of money. Right. And so you're going to be way better off instead of buying into this lie that time is money. If you wake up and realize the truth about wealth, that time is infinitely more valuable than money. In fact, I'll prove it to you for everybody watching right now. If I said to you, I'll write you right now, a $500,000 check. And yes, it will clear the bank. If I write you a $500,000 check right now, um, who would like that check? Right. Pretty much everybody. Right. Exactly. Yeah. But RJ, okay, you raised your hand. So let's say I'm going to give you a five hundred thousand dollar check to send it send it over right now today. In fact, I'll send you a wire right now today. It'll show up today. There's one stipulation: you have to end your life today. Now, do you want the five hundred thousand dollars? You can keep that five hundred thousand dollars. I keep my five hundred thousand dollars. Okay. Now, but wait yeah. a minute. I thought time was money. So no. Why why are you saying no? I'm not going to take that five hundred thousand dollars if I got it in my life today. Well, because you already know intuitively that time is more valuable than money, and you value the rest of your life, even if even though the possibility exists, you get hit by a car today and your life could end anyway. You value your life so much, and you have so much positive expectation for the future that you already value your time more than you value money. Is there any amount of money somebody could give you to end your life today? Yeah. There is there. No, I said, is there any amount no, no. of money? It's, it's not going to happen in general. What's that? Yeah. Like it's not going to happen. Like no one is going to probably say yes, you know, for like ending their life. Right. For a exactly. So you already value time more than you value money. Okay. So yeah. it, once you realize that time is more valuable than money, now what you do is you flip the script. You start figuring out how to make enough money to buy back the rest of your life. So you pay somebody to cut the grass. Instead of you cutting the grass, that buys back three hours of your time if it takes you three hours to cut your yard. You, you pay somebody to wash your car instead of you washing your car. You pay somebody to fix your car, right? You pay somebody to clean your house. You pay somebody to cook your food. Why? Rich people don't do that because we're too lazy. We don't pay people to do stuff for us because we're too lazy, because we think we're too good. We just realize the value of time so much that we're willing to spend as much money as necessary to buy back the rest of our lives. So leverage means like having like colossal cash flow days. What does that mean? Having days where you make um, 20,000, 30,000, 50,000, 100,000, 500,000, a million dollars in a single day. That Those yeah. are cash flow days. Those, those are colossal cash flow days. And so when you have those colossal cash flow days and you have these big days, you know, one of the things that I teach my clients how to do is I teach them how to have a, like, have the million dollar days, like hundred K days, a million dollar day. We have a hundred K day award for people who make a hundred thousand dollars in a day. We have a million dollar day award for people who make a million dollars in a day. We have a $5 million day award and we're going to create a $10 million day award. As soon as one of our students has $10 million in a day. Why? Because wealth has a need for speed. And I believe that wealth is measured more in time than it is in money. So you want to make money fast. You want to make a hundred thousand dollars in a day. You want to make a million dollars a day. And I know what some people are thinking. Ah, that sounds like that sounds like uh, one of those get rich quick schemes. Hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You're not going to be here long enough to get rich slow. So if you ain't going to get rich quick, you ain't going to get rich. Right. We've all been warned about the get rich quick scheme, but nobody warned us about the stay broke for the rest of your life scheme. Right. So we have to understand you need to have some kind of leverage. Uh, what's leverage? Leverage is some kind of asset that produces cash flow. Maybe you wrote a book and you sell a thousand books in a day at $20 a piece, you sold 20,000 books. Maybe you have a home study course that you sell for a thousand dollars and you sell, you know, 10 of those a day and you make $10,000 a day, right? Maybe you have a mastermind um, that you sell for a hundred grand and you sell um, three of those a month. And so you make $300,000 a month. So you, you have colossal cash flow. That's the leverage pillar. The next one is the lifestyle pillar. And the lifestyle pillar is the pillar that you build with continuity cash flow. Okay, so you got colossal cash flow over here, got continuity like cash flow over here. Continuity cash flow, let me let me go back in the in the um in the mode. So continuity cash flow is things like a membership site or things like a membership site, things like um um a newsletter, things like um, even a payment plan, like if you sell something to somebody and you finance it for them, that's a continuity program. A continuity program could be um, access to um, a member's area. It could be any and all of those things. So that's the lifestyle pillar. The reason 
You want to have a leverage pillar is so you can buy back your time. The reason you want to have a lifestyle pillar is lifestyle pillar. You want to build the leverage pillar first, build the lifestyle pillar second. The lifestyle pillar gives you the ability to work part time in your business or work part time on your business and then spend the rest of your time thinking to grow rich. Spend the rest of your time enjoying your family. Spend the rest of the time doing the hobbies that you love to do, writing books, whatever it is. So you want lifestyle. So you want in the lifestyle pillar, you want to create enough passive cash flow. It's not really passive, but we're going to call it passive because that's what people know it by. It's more deferred cash flow, right? Because you're doing the work, but you're just getting paid for it over a longer period of time, right? So, so this, this, you got this passive cash flow coming in, this deferred cash flow coming in, and you want to have, you want to, you want to have get to the place in your life where your lifestyle cash flow, your passive cash flow from your business, like from subscriptions and, and, um, uh, software as a service or whatever you want to have that yeah. become get to the place where that pays for all of your business expenses, right? So if all of your business expenses are paid for with your lifestyle pillar, all of your salaries for all your employees, all of your equipment, all of your leases or whatever you have, it's all paid for by your lifestyle pillar. Now you're in the catbird seat. There's oh I, I can move and groove now. Well, the last pillar, the last pillar is the legacy pillar. This is the one that takes the longest to build, and it's the one that's the most important, but this one is compounding cash flow. And that's where you invest your money, and your money makes money. So, so with, with, with compounding cash flow, building a legacy, building legacy has to do with by owning real estate, owning stocks, um, selling options on those stocks, um, having owning assets kick off cash flow, whatever those assets are. They could be, they could be a, any myriad of things, but you own assets, you take your money. So this is the, these two pillars are the money your business makes you. This is the money your money makes you, right? And you want to get to the place where your money ultimately, like you, you will be, you will be like truly legacy wealthy when your legacy pillar, your money makes you more money and your active cash flow and your passive cash flow from your business. When this becomes the biggest pillar in your financial fortress, now you are legacy wealthy. Your family is wealthy for generations. This is that's generational wealth. This one's the fastest to get to. This one takes a little more time, but this one is the one you want to focus on. Like all, like we don't, we we, we I don't keep money in the bank. Like I, I don't keep it in the bank. We put it in, we put it into investments, right? We put it into, yeah. we put it into our brokerage accounts. We put it into real estate. We put it into things. They're going to make, turn it into more money. Right. And so my goal for this year, and it's kind of hard to do what I'm about to say to do because, but I'm, it's still my goal this year. My goal this year is to get to the place where my legacy income finally surpasses all of my business income. Right. Wow. And that's hard to do because last month we did a million dollars in revenue. This month we'll do probably three million dollars in revenue. So it's kind of hard to get to the place where this is producing more than that. But when you do now, you are really in the catbird seat and no one, no human being can come along and snatch the rug out from under your feet. So that is the financial fortress formula that we use in our family and that I teach to my clients so that they can start to build some real and lasting wealth. Hopefully that was helpful. Wow, this is like absolutely like hands down, you know, crazy thing out there. And you guys, like this is something like, you know, you really need to go in, go back, watch it again out there. You need these three L's, you know, sort of out there just to make everything work out and, you know, have sort of necessary idea how you need to make, you know, great and sort of wealth out there where, you know, work on that legacy sort of wealth with Kessel Bra. Right. And see what most people have. Most people don't have. Absolutely crazy. Most people don't have any of these. Most people are, when you have a job, you are somebody yeah. else's leverage. Like you are creating leverage for somebody else. Archimedes said, Archimedes said, I'm going to draw this on here so you can see it. Archimedes said, if you give me a lever long enough and a prop strong enough and a place to stand, he said, I can single handedly move the world. But if you don't have any, le- if you don't have a lever and you don't have a prop, you don't have any leverage, then here's the reality. You are somebody else's leverage. That's yeah. real life. So hopefully that's helpful. Absolutely. This is absolutely helpful out there. Like people, like I'm going to say this again to you guys. You 
need to go back. You need to check that out as well. These three L's are like, I need to check out how to then, you know, work on the freaking sort of belt out there in terms of that aspect as well. And we know that you have also the book, you know, regarding sort of wealth and, you know, how you create wealth in terms of like scriptures, biblical sort of wealth out there from the trash man to the cash man out there. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. So I wrote, so literally I wrote from the trash man to the cash man because I had this financial discovery. Like I had this awakening, right? Literally. Um, and it happened in April of 1999. I can remember it like it was yesterday. I read this book in, and I learned this principle um, in January of 1999, I started applying it to my life. It actually kicked in in April of 1999, and I accidentally made six thousand dollars in one week. Now, understand this: um, 1998, I made forty-eight thousand dollars for the whole year. I mean, a whole year went by, and all I made was forty-eight thousand dollars, right? And literally, if I had a week go by, I mean, if I had a week go by and only made forty-eight thousand dollars, now I'm like, oh man, where did I mess up, right? Okay, so so I had a whole year go by and I only made $48,000. But 1999, in April of 1999, in one week, I accidentally made $6,200. And I say accidentally because I wasn't, I wasn't, um, I didn't have a goal. I'm going to make $6,000 this week. It was just, I start, I shifted my focus from um, what poor people think is the purpose of money and what middle class people think is the purpose of money. And I started seeing the purpose of money from the perspective of a rich person. And when I did that, everything changed for me. Poor people think the purpose of money is paying bills. Middle class people think the purpose of money is to maintain good credit so they can buy stuff they can't afford. Rich people know that the primary purpose of making money is to turn it into more money. In my book, From the Trash Man to the Cash Man, I say I like to hold on to my money long enough for it to get pregnant and have some babies. And I don't spend the mama money. I only right. spend the baby money, right? And so most people, as soon as they get some money, they go get rid of it, right? And so... Um, I learned this principle and I accidentally made $6,000 in one week. And that, that's what that, what that ex experience changed my life. Here's what happened. As soon as I made that $6,200 that week, I said, wow. Then I said it backwards. I said, wow. And then I said, um, that was easy. In fact, this is the easiest money I've ever made. And I concluded that must mean it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. Like if I could give you some financial advice, everybody listening to me right now, if I could give you some financial advice, the financial advice I would give you would be, it is easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. Stop looking for, stop looking at all the hard ways to make a little bit of money. Only look for and only look at the easier ways to make a lot. If you will trust that that is truth and you will do it, it will change your life for the rest of your life. Like I teach people how to sell high ticket. Like I could tell you right now, uh, RJ, you, you, yeah. you sell, you're an entrepreneur, right? Yep. Okay. What do you sell? I sell a lot of digital product. I have my own masterclass. Okay. How much is your masterclass? 500 bucks right now. 500 bucks. Okay. So here's what I'm going to tell you to do. R raise your price of your master, your master. You said it's masterclass. Yeah. Master it's a masterclass on entrepreneurship. Uh, the master class, the way I teach people how to master dream 100. Okay. So you teach people how to master dream 100. Okay. So yep. here's, and how long is that? Is that a year? Uh, it's a one hour long master class and then have rest of the process as well. You know, I show people how to, uh, you know, work on their shows, get those dream 100 guests, create relations with them and, you know, move forward with it. Right. So, so I'm going to say, raise the price to $3,000. You'll sell more of them. And I know that's hard for you to wrap your mind around. You will sell more of them. Okay. And you will attract better clients. It'll change your life. You'll, you'll do less work. You'll make way more money. I, I remember when I first started selling quote high ticket, right? I had a program that I don't even sell it anymore. I don't even sell it anymore. I used to sell this speaker training where I teach people how to sell from stage. And that was like the thing, right? When I first started selling, I sold it for $3,000. And the reason I decided to sell it for $3,000, I said, that's a price that's higher than anybody would pay me. Right? Yeah. And I made the offer and two people bought it wait, what? And the next time I sold, I raised the price. I raised the price to $4,000. Seven people bought it. Wait, what? But now I don't sell it anymore, but I used to sell it for $55,000. Right. And I don't even sell it anymore. Cause it's just, it, it's, it's I, we can get people there faster. If they just join my inner circle for $155,000. And yeah. And um, we can just help people get to their $100,000 day, $50,000 day, million dollar day so much faster 
if they just join the inner circle and I teach them how to build all three of those pillars and their life has changed forever. So anyway, um, so, so raise your prices. It's easier to sell premium products than it is to sell low price products. Um, and I don't know, where do you live? Where are you, where are you based out of? Yeah, I'm in Pakistan. Okay. You're in Pakistan. So $500 in Pakistan is probably a lot more than $500 here, right? Absolutely. Are most of your, are most of your money. Are most of your clients in Pakistan? No, all of my clients are like tier one base, you know, United States, UK, and yeah. yeah. Raise your prices, bro. Raise your prices. If you're selling to people in the United States and, and the UK, raise your price to $5,000. Like seriously, right now, like today. Like you don't have to, but you will thank me in a week. Like not in a month, not in a year. You will thank me in a week if you raise your prices. So um, all of those of you who are fans of RJ right now who are listening to me, before he changes the price of his program and realizes how good he is at what he does, um, you may want to go ahead and take advantage of what he's offering. Anyway, that's that's my advice. You didn't ask me to say that, but I'm telling you, like, I like you. I like what you're doing. And I'm telling you, if you will raise your price, it'll change your life for the rest of your life. So. Um, yeah. So absolutely, um, like I, I'm definitely gonna make it way like that way out there. Like you have already said that. Like people are like on the comment section, like going crazy. The biggest if epiphany I had in like 2021, like raise the prices. Like ah, so many comments out there. I'm definitely gonna follow that advice out there. I'm gonna make it happen. Good, hundred percent. Good. I I have a fifty five thousand dollar offer, and I have a. I mean, I used to have a fifty five. I don't have that anymore. I have a hundred fifty five thousand dollar offer, and I have a million dollar offer, and yeah. because of COVID. I created a challenge that I am never like I haven't done a low ticket offer in so long I forgot what I forgot what a low ticket offer was right so I did a challenge that impacted the the entrepreneurial space in such a great way it was called the make more offers challenge because as I coach entrepreneurs the biggest flaw that I see in their business is they don't make enough offers right and so yeah. I started this challenge and the and it's a low ticket offer and it's a low ticket offer for a reason because I believe that I can help people who have just gone through like a really difficult year last year, I can help them like catapult themselves back to a place of dignity and self-respect and, and having the wherewithal to take care of their families and not worrying about what, you know, the future holds. Right. And so I started this challenge and on the low, the low ticket, the general admission ticket is $97. The VIP ticket is $297. Now I know some of you are thinking, but you didn't you just sell, tell RJ to sell high ticket. Yeah. But he doesn't have a high ticket product or is the $500 yeah. program your highest ticket product. I have a product out there that I provide done for you service, which is around three thousand dollars. No, 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 no. We ain't do that. We ain't doing done for you. Go do it yourself, <laughs> baby. Go do it yourself, baby. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> Did you see? I got a little attitude right there. Did you see me get a little <laughs> attitude, RJ? Okay. So, um, so yeah, yeah. People who want you to do something for them, they're like, uh, no. <laughs> pull out my eyelashes ten at a time. No, let's don't do that. Um, uh, let's, let's find people who are willing to do the work and then teach them what work to do and change their lives. My job is not to, I don't mean this in a, in a condescending way. It sounds kind of condescending. My, my job is not to find people who are losing and teach them how to win. My job is to find people who are winning and teach them how to win bigger. That's your job too. Absolutely. So. This is crazy thing out there, guys. Like if you not get that thing out there, I don't know what the freaking hell you get out there on this particular thing. And I, I really know that, you know, Martin, you're also like limited time. I truly appreciate your time as well out there. So sure. one really last thing that I want to ask before we round the session up out there is why you think so personally that people find it so hard to invest on themselves out there because you know you're charging high ticket out there i know that you love to pay people out there so you love to get paid as well why you really think so that it happened that people are not investing on themselves out there what do you think about it because nobody's teaching them how nobody's teaching yeah. like see here's what happens okay <laughs> um you have to understand people are motivated from the inside out not from the outside in Right. So you understand what I mean? So, so they're not going to buy something because I want to buy something. I'm not their. I am not your motivation. Right. Your yeah. motivation has to come with, from within inside you. Human beings. So I'm going to teach you something really cool that will help all of you. So human beings do things for one reason and one reason only. Are you ready? Yep. Because they feel like it. If you do something, you do it because you feel like doing it. If you don't do it, you don't do it because you don't feel like doing it. So. Yeah. My job as a human being is not to figure out how to make myself do something. My job 
that's going to be good for me. My job is to figure out how to make myself feel like doing something that's going to be good for me. You understand the difference? Yep. Okay. So when I'm selling, here's the difference between how I sell and how I teach my students to sell and how everybody else in the world sells. Everybody else in the world sells by trying to get you to buy. I don't try to get you to buy. I don't care if you buy or not. Buy or don't buy. I don't care. Like I, I care about you, but I don't care if you buy something from me. I don't need to make a sale. Right. Yeah. So you, most people sell by trying to get you to buy. I get you to buy by creating an environment that makes you feel like buying. And that's the difference. Absolutely crazy. Yeah, it, it, it really is. And I teach people how to get, I teach my students how to get people to buy, how to get people to buy by creating an environment that makes them feel like buying as well. And so if you want to learn how to sell without yelling and how to sell without telling, I hate it when people say, I'm going to teach you how to sell without being salesy. No, you're going to teach them how to sell without being pushy or without high pressure. But pushy and high pressure is not salesy. That's yeah. the lack of sales. People will try to pressure you into buying what they're selling because they did a very bad job at selling. Selling is persuasion. It's not convincing. Convincing is when I attempt to get you to do something I desire Absolutely. you to do for my reasons. Selling is persuasion. Persuasion is when I help you make a decision you already desire to make for your own reasons. So in order for me to sell you, what most people try to do is they try to cram their reasons down your throat for why you should buy their stuff. What I do is I discover what your reasons are and I show you how what I have solves that problem more, more elegantly than anything else in the marketplace. And then you're like, that makes sense. I think I'll have one of those. Yeah. In fact, give me two, right? <laughs> so crazy, like value bomb out there right away out there. Like I'm going to, guys, you need to go in and listen in again out there. Some people out there commenting right away out there like, bro, you should charge for this interview with Marin out there. Like, that's, that's absolutely valuable out there. Think And like way people can like really go in and find about and get like everything that you have to offer because we know we have people out there who really love you out there. So way people well, can find about you, your offer so, and everything. So the best place to go is like the easiest place is Instagram, like go on Instagram, hit the link tree. My make more offers challenge is there. Like anybody who doesn't do my make word, the next challenge is coming up in like two weeks. Right. And it was game changer. Like when you like, like people learn more in this five day challenge. I've had people say, literally had people say, I learned more in this five day challenge than I learned in the degree I got from the university. Like seriously, it's five days. Right. Right. Did, oh, did you, were you in the challenge? Uh, no, I'm not, I'm guys. Oh, I'm you're definitely in the university. Challenge. Yep, you're I'm a student, student in the university. university. Okay, so yeah, so for for hundred for ninety seven dollars or for two hundred ninety seven dollars, and the difference is th the people who pay ninety seven dollars they get to watch me teach in the Facebook group. They don't get to interact with me. It's just a general admission ticket. You get to be in the auditorium, right? The people who do yeah. VIP they get to be on Zoom and they get to ask me questions. We do an hour Q and A before each call every day, and um, we on Sunday afternoon we do like a meet and greet. It's going to be it's going to be so fantastic. Um, but the, there's a there's a link to the make more offers challenge in my link tree on Instagram. So if you and if you want to go there, if you want to get some Myron Golden swag, like a golf shirt or a hat or a coffee mug um, or like a don't be a chucklehead shirt or something like that, you can go to MyronGolden.com and there's a link to all of our swag there and you can take advantage of some of that as well. Absolutely. So yeah, guys, like we're going to put up all of the links out there in the description down below the link tree and every other resources. I'm going to get into the challenge out there. Hands down. You know, my degree doesn't pay it, anything out there to me. I'm going to get into it. It will change your life forever. I'm, 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 I'm not saying that. I'm not saying I don't. Please don't take this as being arrogant. I'm not being arrogant. Yeah. I have sold. I have sold. I just did. I just did six hundred thousand dollars in sales last weekend in an hour. I've done three point eight million dollars in sales in 27 minutes. I understand selling at a very high level because I've studied it and practiced, study, practice, study, practice, study, practice for decades. And I will teach you things about sales that you did not know were possible. I helped to another one of my students. This right here, RJ, this is my million dollar day award. This is what I give to my students who go out and build a million dollars in a day. And I, you, hopefully, hopefully you can see that. I'm trying to put it. Okay. So you can see yep. that, right? Million dollar day, right? Okay. So I don't know if you can tell or not, but this is, it's like an M on top. The thing on top yep. is an M, right? Okay. But it's also a crown. And then the G is a shield. It represents yep. protection and provision. And this is what I've got five students who've won this in the last three years, a million dollars in a day because wealth has a need for speed. And, and now 
without having to pay me 155000 or without having to pay me a million dollars, you can learn from me for five days in a row. I, th- I get paid $25,000 an hour for coaching, RJ. So if you just were general admission and you did five hours with me, it would cost you 125 grand. Yeah. If you're a VIP, you're going to get two hours a day for five days. That's 10 hours. That'd be worth a quarter of a million dollars. So and you can access it for 297 bucks. So I will look forward to seeing you in the challenge and some of the folks who are watching in the challenge. And I'm excited for what you're going to learn and how your life is going to change. And what you're going to learn is you're going to learn how to make those higher ticket offers. Because one day we teach lead generation offers. Then we teach core product offers. Then we teach um, um, high ticket offers. Then we teach continuity offers. And then the last day we tie it all together. It's really mind blowing. Awesome. Like we definitely going to jump in right away and I'm going to put up the link in the description down below. I see people are like, I'm all in, even if it's like $5,000 for five days, you guys are the man, you guys are the people out there. So we're definitely going to jump on. And again, Myron, thank you so much for your time out there. Any last thing that you want to say before we round the show up? Yes. Um, when I was involved in that network marketing company, um, AL Williams, um, Art Williams, the guy who started it said, life will give you what you accept or life will give you what you'll fight for. Stop yeah. accepting what life hands to you and go out and fight for what you desire. You'll be blown away when you get it. Have you ever, uh, I, I was listening I was listening to um, a guy named Bavin. I don't know, he's a billionaire tech dude, right? I was listening to him on Clubhouse yesterday and he said something so powerful. He said, have you ever learned a new English word and then when you learned it, all of a sudden you started hearing it everywhere? Right. Yeah. Or you get a new car and now all of a sudden you start seeing that. That's that's the reticular activator. Right. Well, why didn't you hear that word before you learned it? Why didn't you start seeing that car before you bought it? Well, because you weren't vibrating on that frequency. Right. When you start vibrating on that frequency, then you start becoming aware of things that were there all along that you couldn't see because your vibration was too low. See, everything is energy. Energy is neither created nor destroyed. It just changes form. Right. High income can only come from high energy. So high income can only come from high energy. So no high energy result can ever flow to a low energy source. What all of you must learn to do, you must learn to become a source of high energy and go out into life and, and like resonate with high energy. And then you will begin to see opportunities that were always there, but you couldn't see them because you weren't there yet. I'm done. Wow, you know, this is absolutely crazy out there. And again, Marion, like, thank you so much for your time. And guys, again, I'm uh, as soon as the interview ends, I'm going to put up all of the resources out there. I'm going to jump into a challenge. You guys jump into the challenge. Let's get into it together and let's have fun. Let's do it, you know. Let's go. So, let's go. Again, Marion, thank you so much for your time. And yeah, guys, this is it for now. See you next week. Until then, bye-bye.